battle of the century went only nine short rounds. But hot were hopes for vengeance when Jack Johnson came to town. A tall white woman on each arm, and proudly did they stride, and black is he the race about in which he did arrive. No southern hamlet this, but quite advanced in many ways. A prominent black doctor, a hotel where presidents stayed. But still, not all were happy that the champion might slay Big Jim Flynn, the fireman from up New Jersey way. Who knows what pent-up anger lay neath Johnson's easy glow. Barred from the local inn, he had to rent a bungalow. While Flynn, only the challenger, had no such painful stings. He put up at a fine hotel with mineral bath and springs. The bleachers of a thousand seats were built in Murray's field, and thousands more they stood to see if the giant would be killed. Flynn was not the kind of man to fall without a trace, but Johnson not the sort to be put easily in his place. The fireman charged and bowled and railed, but Johnson stayed quite cool. He treated Flynn as would a teacher, a small child in school. While Flynn attacked, the champion smiled and chatted with his dame, who sat demure at ringside, likewise easy about the game. Flynn, outclassed and desperate, fouled the champion as he could. He butted Johnson with his head, but alas, it did no good. Nine rounds of such insolence did not turn day to night. All good things must surely stop. The police ended the fight. Johnson pocketed his wind, stepped down, and calmly walked away. His body scarcely sweating on that Independence Day. Still smiling, joking with the crowd, his lady on his arm, his straw boater upon his head, and no one badly harmed. Hundreds had come by that week to watch the champion train. Out there in that open field, made muddy by the rain, the battle was now over, the bleachers were torn down, the fireman was humbled, and the champion left town. <laughs>